And then you've got my favourite for its uselessness, the thunderstorms. <laughs> What's the point in that? Hey everybody, nice to see you again. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is just going to be a bit of an update really. Like this tank for instance, I feel like I've been cleaning it for the best part of three months and it still looks manky in places. I just thought I'd take you through some of these things. It's probably not going to be the most YouTube friendly video, so there might only be half a dozen of you watching. Hello, if you're one of them. If you're new, click that subscribe button if you like this kind of random drivel. Yeah, maybe I'll make a thumbnail that goes and that get a few more people in. I don't know quite why that works, but... This is my pee puffer tank. A lot of you have been asking me about this one. Uh, it seems to be the general consensus is I've killed them all. But no, they're very much still alive in there. I've just been too embarrassed to show you how horrible it is. But let's take a closer look. So this is the tank after, like I say, what feels like three weeks worth of water changes all done in one day. And it's still filled with a load of detritus. Um, but what's good about this is, so you've got the hang on back filter here, which is one of my favourite filters and um, just because it's so cheap and so effective but that's obviously creating this kind of circular motion in here and what happens is, this is the dead spot really normally you don't want dead spots in your aquarium but I quite like this because it all accumulates in one place so you know where you have to go to pick it all up um, but it seems to be never ending today so I've had a bit of a trim of the plants um, here you can see some of the, the pea puffers filling my finger. Um, they've just had a few snails. In fact, let's see if we can grab another snail and put one in there. See if they are interested. This one might be a bit big, but I'm sure they'll have a go at it. They're usually straight onto these things. Um, they're quite good hunters. It's probably too big, but they'll kill it, and they'll have little bits at it, and they'll snack on it for a while. So there's three of them in here. I would like to get a few more, but I've just not really been anywhere that sells any good-looking ones. Um, the other inhabitants of the tank, if you can scale back out a bit, you'll see there are some cherry shrimp around. There's also some coolie loaches. Quite a few coolie loaches, but they're very good at hiding, so you don't often see them. But what you might see on this plant here, for instance, on some of these ones, is some horrendous algae. Now, it's not on all of them, so we used to have, um, on this lily, the leaves were quite badly affected on this plant, which I forget the name of now, but I'm sure I'll forget to put in the comments later. That used to have quite bad algae, the vals, they were affected with algae. None of the other plants except for these are now affected with algae, so hopefully I'm starting to slowly win the battle. And I'd love to be able to tell you that, ah, well this is the number one remedy here to get rid of all your algae woes, but uh, there isn't one. It's completely my fault. Nine times out of ten, any kind of algae issues you have in your tank, it's your own fault. You're either leaving the lights on too often, you're not changing the water often enough, you're not cleaning it well enough, um, the, all kinds of things. Balance is what you're looking for, and if you've got algae, balance is what you've not got. But you'll see that there's algae on the back wall of the tank. I really don't care about that. I quite like having that there. And it gives a little bit of a feeding frenzy or a feeding source for the autos, which are the other inhabitants for this tank. But these pea puffers are pretty cool. <laughs> that shrimp there is bigger than the puffers. So the shrimp provide a kind of ongoing natural food source. Well, as natural as you can be in an aquarium. In that they keep having babies and the shrimp keep eating the babies. Um, enough of the babies survive because I've got quite a lot of cover in here. There's, it's fairly well planted. And there's lots of nooks and crammies. So and you do see babies quite often. Um, but obviously the shrimp are really good hunters and they will pick them off. They don't bother with the adults, obviously, because the adults are bigger than them. Um, but what I find works really well in this tank is they seem to be good companions for each other. So the shrimp obviously provide the babies and then the puffers keep the population under control. And then the coolies come along and clear up any debris. So, and here, these are some of the vibrobites, the hikari vibrobites. The shrimp will eat them. Um, but they seem to take their time over these. They'll eat one or two, then leave it, and then come back in an hour, eat another couple, leave it, come back, etc. 
uh, but the coolie loaches, once the lights go out, they'll come out and they'll sweep up and clean up anything that's left over. And then we've got about half a dozen autos as well in here, um, which are looking nice and fat. Uh, and they take care of all the, the algae. Uh, they have been working their way through some of the algae issues in here, but this this kind of stuff here, it's not like black beard algae, it's almost like green beard algae. I wonder if I could try some hydrogen peroxide. Might give that a go and see if it works. Normally we'd only use that on black beard algae. Um, but yeah, I might try that. So that's my puffer tank. One of my favourite tanks, probably the tank I spend the most time with because it's in my office. And just because these little guys are so personable and so inquisitive and always always out and about hunting. Uh, they quite often follow your finger. There comes one of the coolie loaches up there. He's coming out to have a little look. Most of the coolie loaches are fairly bog standard brown, nothing special. There are a few stripy ones. Okay, battery ran out, so let's recommence. New t-shirt, new day. The last thing I want to do on this tank is swap the lights over. So, it used to have a plain old uh, Nicru LED light. Just your plain, bog standard cheapo light from Amazon or eBay. Just bright whites and blues, that's all it does. Perfectly fine. Um, the plants were growing, everything seemed happy, I liked the look of it. But in my last video, or one before that possibly, I bought this new light, which is still a Nicru, but it's the Nicru Planted LED 24-7 light. And I've been playing with this for a few weeks now down in the fish room, and I had it over one of my tanks down there. It's just got loads of features, so it's got a built-in timer, and um, down here you can do it with the, the buttons on the machine itself. Uh, basically it'll run through a 24-hour cycle and you can set what you want the cycle, or you have the remote control. Um, where you can set various things like reds, blues, greens, levels, tell what time it is, um, put in thunder clouds and thunderstorms and cloudy days and all kinds of things. And been really impressed with it. Uh, if for nothing else, just for the build quality, it does not flex at all. Um, if you compare it to the cheapo one, that one almost snaps when you put the slightest bit of pressure on it. Um, so, cheap, rattly. Still does a good job. Um, I would recommend it. This one, oh, there's nothing in there. Um, the, the end pieces are made of plastic and they are a bit rattly, but the main body is uh, metal and obviously it's meant to be full spectrum and everything, but it's the, the extra features that have done it for me. So I'm going to upgrade this tank and put this tank, this light, under the tank. Uh, previously, I had Velcroed, um, put some strips of Velcro on the light and on the bottom of the shelf above it. This one's its not actually all that much heavier. But I could probably get away with Velcro in this one actually, because it's really not that much heavier. But what I was going to do was use these um, slidey stat lid stands or rim stands. Normally they come in this kind of orientation where you set this on the glass and then that's if you imagine your aquarium's under here, that's sitting there. But what I tend to do when I'm hanging these lights is just turn them upside down. Um, turn them upside down and I'll generally use cable ties or something like that on here. And then good old staple gun, psh, psh, stick to whatever we're doing. But in this case, I've just got an old piece of fabric. I'm just going to fold that over. So it sits like that and then I can staple on the fabric and it might look a bit better. But now that I think about it, I might actually just Velcro these on. But decisions, decisions. I should probably look this up on Google and see how much they weigh. Okay, internet wasn't that useful, so trusty kitchen scales came out. The old light, the cheap one, was 470 grams. The new one was 650, so about 200 grams heavier, which isn't all that much. So I might scrap that plan of me staple gunning my shelves and just stick with the Velcro. But that does mean I wouldn't have access to the manual buttons, but I'm not all that bothered because every, all these features are on the remote control anyway. So as long as I don't lose that, everything should be good. So, I need to find that Velcro tape stuff. Back in a second. So, there you go. I've turned the lights out so you probably can't see me very well, but you can see the tank lit up perfectly. 
Um, this is a two foot tank and the, the light itself is made to be up to three foot I think, something like that. But it, it fits this perfectly. Um, the remote is quite good. You basically have a number of times round here. So you press the button to get into 24-7 mode and then you choose the time, so let's say it was midnight, press that and then confirm it again and that will take you to, well that wasn't actually midnight was it? But anyway, that will then just run through that and its default lighting parameters which is take you through sunset, ramp up all the colors, sunrise, ramp up all the colors, uh, full sun for a few hours and then ramp back down again. All the instructions uh, tell you exactly how much they're given each color. Um, if you don't want to do that you can come out of the 24-7 mode and you can choose any of these buttons which give you cloudy day, thunderstorms, full sun and night. Um, night obviously is just a light blue light. It's it's not quite as bright as it seems in the camera there. Uh, full sun, it's full sun obviously. Uh, cloudy day is just more blues but it kind of wavers up and down over time. And then you've got my favourite for its uselessness, the thunderstorms. <laughs> What's the point in that? Uh, it just makes me smile. Um, so I'll just sit and do that over and over again. Who knows why. As well as that, um, you've also got your white, red, green and blue. You can set each of these individually. I'll just turn that off in case anyone's got epilepsy. You can set each of these individually and create your own lighting modes. So you've got memory buttons down the side. Um, so you can up and down the intensity of one, save that as M1. And you do that, you just hold the memory button for three seconds and it saves that for you. Um, I believe that if you press, if you so if you set uh, a light that you like and save it as memory one, if you press memory one and then go into 24-7, that's the schedule it'll use for the lights, or when it's on full. Um, but I've not quite tried that one out yet, or I don't think I have. It seems to work sometimes and not other times. It's basically, if you've got, uh, there's tons of tons and tons of lights out there that use the exact same remote and controller, I imagine, ones like the Finex, um, which I've seen lots of people make videos on, it seems to work exactly the same way as that. But for what it is, it's a fantastic little light and it looks great. Um, I'll see if I can get the demo mode and put that on so you can see it running through all the different uh, light intensities. And then we'll leave it at that for this video. But if any of this has even remotely inclined you to subscribe, please click that subscribe button, wherever it is, down here, maybe here. Um, it really helps me out, um, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, all the links, affiliates and all that in the description. Bye.